case of the access to the World Heritage Site in Romania, a case of Dacian Fortresses. Yes, exactly. So, dear colleagues, uh, my topic, um, uh, I think it's actual, even if we are in 21% when the question of access, uh, it sounds some, some, some uh, thing like a, a strange issue, but um, I will demonstrate my presentation that it's uh, still actual in some specific cases or in some specific landscape situations. So, Romania, among other countries, of course, uh, are part of the uh, UNESCO Convention uh, and uh, since 1990. And, um, between 1990 and today, Romania succeeded to inscribe eight sites, two natural and six uh, uh, culture. And now the government and the Institute of, Institute of Culture Heritage updated the, the indicative, uh, the tentative list. Um, should be 19, but it's still 15 because they didn't uh, inform the World Heritage Center to update the information. So we are still waiting for updating. So this is the table about the World Heritage Sites of Romania inscribed uh, years and also the criteria. And um, among these uh, sites, we have Dacian Fortress of uh, Orestia Mountains. It's part of Transylvania area in the middle of Romania. And we have, of course, the famous landscape, but also the famous uh, antique heritage, which is uh, unique. And that's why probably it was inscribed in 1999 as part of the World Heritage List. So. Uh, between or since 1990, Romania did some steps uh, to uh, implement, not just to sign the convention, but also to implement convention. And they uh, changed some, some, uh, some laws. They approved some rules. Uh, but still today, uh, a new updated uh, regulation or the, the list of regulation concerning the World Heritage uh, Sites, it's under discussion already for the last two years. Now we have a draft under a discussion between the, the experts uh, at the Ministry of Culture, but also at the Commission of the Monuments in Romania. And we hope until end of this year, we will have the new updated uh, decision of the government of Romania concerning the management of the World Heritage, Heritage Sites from Romania, uh, including the structure of the management, including the duties and many other aspects of the actions uh, which should be taken by the public administration at the central and the local level. Um, probably, uh, as part of this debate, uh, will be uh, discussed and also approved the, the issues concerning the access and the infrastructure uh, of the World Heritage uh, Sites from Romania. And uh, one of the big issues uh, is concerned the Dacian Fortress, because uh, all of them are placed in the mountain area, which is a difficult uh, landscape. Uh, it's unique, it's original of the forest. But to have the access, it's still complicated in some of them. Even if we could Google or we could search uh, on the internet and to find uh, some information concerning the, the site, some information concerning the, the uh, history of the site or, 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 and also the access to them. So you could uh, have seen the map uh, of the distribution of the Dacian fortresses uh, in the Carpathian Basin. And these are the pictures of the ancient uh, fortresses uh, selected to be part of the World Heritage List because uh, among ancient fortresses we have uh, more than six, of course, and uh, when it was decided to discuss why just six, of course, uh, what uh, the question was, uh, what, uh, which we discussed already, uh, to be representative, but also to uh, respect the, the UNESCO uh, rules concerning OUV, but also authenticity and integrity of the site. Uh, so, from the... the uh, the map and from the pictures, of course, they are original, uh, but to go to find the remains in the forest, it's not so easy. So um, uh, we have a project uh, which we launched already two years ago about the management of the World Heritage, uh, Heritage Sites in Romania and about the management. Unfortunately, just uh, one uh, site in Romania has the management plan. Other, yeah, two of them, let's say Danube Delta, which, which is natural and among Six of uh, culture sites, just one, the monastery Hurezi has the management plan, which is uh, accessible, it's open source, it, it's placed uh, on the web page. Other uh, five, and more, uh, most of them are uh, serial sites, they do not have the management plans. The question is under discussion. We try to bring together this, uh, the people responsible from the area to discuss. We did already a couple of seminars to uh, discuss the issue, to train them, to explain uh, the role and the content, and uh, which is uh, the, the management plan for the each site. We hope, as a result of these discussions under the Ministry of Culture and the government, 
by approving the, the new uh, decision of the government, they will enforce somehow, they will force the local authorities to uh, open the, the question and to uh, develop the management plan uh, of the each side. So access, it's more or less easy because uh, you, if you open the, 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 the maps, if you open the, the different uh, applications, it's easy to put, for example, Kapilna, uh, UNESCO or the World Heritage Sites Romania and uh, the, the application will give you the, the, the ways. And also if you travel uh, through Romanian roads, uh, you'll find a lot of uh, inscriptions concerning, for example, the World Heritage Site, uh, in this case, the, the, the Dacian fortresses or different other monasteries uh, or uh, um, uh, rural <coughs> or sites which are inscribed in... in uh, so it was a project done by government together with the uh, Minister of Transportation and they placed a lot of inscriptions and you'll find uh, easy to... So in some cases, it's like, like a collections. Uh, of the list of sites and directions and of course how many kilometers from this point to another one. Uh, which is good, so you could see the symbol of the World Heritage uh, gives you an impression that uh, you are following the right way to find the, the, the site. But uh, in finally, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, the situation is different uh, because uh, most of them are in the forest and when you arrived, uh, the main question will be what the site is. So we have some pictures from the uh, drones or from the, the planes, uh, and you could see the forest, okay, in the winter, uh, and some remains uh, of the Sarmisegetusa Regia uh, fortress, which are visible more or less, but it's not so easy to understand. But the main issue, especially uh, in these post-communist countries, the quality of roads. Uh, just a few years ago, it was like this, and especially when it's rain, or after uh, winter, it's not so easy to drive and to find the way. In finally, it was a European project, was supported by European funds, and they built the, the, the road. Um, you see, impressive amount of money uh, were uh, invested, and uh, more or less the road, the question of the access and the quality of road was uh, solved with the parking, with the, some, some uh, information, uh, and also uh, some barriers to, to stop the cars uh, to go directly to the, to the site. So more or less, it's much better. With some information, the quality of information, it's another issue when we are discussing about the access to the information, because you could see the, the schedule uh, for the winter time, for the summer time, but also you could see the rules. Even if it's a huge one, it's not visible and it's not... So, I, know, I don't know exactly how many people stopping in front of this and trying to read the rules of visiting the site. So, when we are discussing about the access to the information, the quality and also the usefulness. It is useful just to show that we have the rules uh, of the site. Uh, and then, uh, okay, this is another picture to show you the, the road and the, the parking area and small museum uh, of the site. But when we, uh, so when they built the, the road, probably the, the, they didn't take into account this, the specific of the, the area of the mountain, but also the erosion. So this is just from the last year when I visited the site, just exactly one year ago. And also the rain and the erosion. So this happened already three or four times. Uh, last year twice and this year in the spring the second time. So the quality of road, uh, it's not the best one. And you could see. So from the mountain are coming the water and the trees and the, everything. And also erosion from the, the, the river area also destroying the quality. Uh, infrastructure issue also it's an important to, to visit the site, especially the natural site or the mixed site or the serial site, to have all necessary uh, elements for, for the visiting. Toilets are placed exactly on the road area. So it's easy to have the access, but we have also to take into account the effect and the impact. And also uh, uh, security, because here it's exactly the, the end of the... the, the yeah. uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's funny, but it's not funny. Uh, and then uh, sometimes, even if I show you the picture that the, the site is closed for the car, sometimes when, when they are doing public events, the uh, access of the cars is open. And actually it's open until the, the uh, remains the, uh, of the ancient fortress, which is not so good. Because not so far, one and a half kilometer just to walk through the forest, which is nice, but you see agglomeration of the cars in, in the site. It's against the rules, of course, and it's against the preservation. Um, Tickets uh, and uh, another issue, sometimes people are not uh, staying in, in the, the castle. To, to, so you have to find who is selling the tickets. 
because the guy, the garden in the site will ask you the ticket. But the person who is responsible to issue the ticket is not always. It's, he's somewhere around, which is another aspect. It's practical one. It's about the, the, uh, the quality of service uh, for the visitors. And also the information which is placed in the site at the entrance, um, uh, the usefulness of the information, and uh, how, uh, ex how the clearly explain uh, the structure of the site and also the excavations and what meaning some remains which was discovered. So, for example, this is a portion of the antique road and it should be better explained because it's not clear what is there, why it's protected uh, by the barriers and uh, how it was uh, used during the ancient time. Now it's much better than it was, for example, 10 years ago or 15 years ago. You could see the difference. Uh, now they are cleaning. Now uh, they have the, the preservation guard. And uh, also um, uh, it's much better than it was before when I'm speaking the, about the remains of, uh, from antiquity, from the Roman time, mostly of them. Some of them from pre-Roman uh, period. Uh, but you have to find the guy to explain because otherwise it's not so easy, especially for the people coming from other countries to understand uh, which kind of sanctuary and the role of sanctuary in the, this uh, part of the ancient fortress. Uh, the forest issue is still active and also uh, always a debate between uh, uh, people from the forest administration and people from the heritage department uh, because it's not allowed to cut something, but it's not allowed to bring or to do something. So it's not my job saying heritage guys uh, and people from the natural side or from the natural division say it's it's your cultural side and you have to take care so you see this ping pong uh, of responsibility it's another aspect concerning the preservation and also the access and protection of serial site like like this one so another uh, fortress it's kostesh uh, chetetsui which is close to the sarmisi yetusa uh, until last year it was a person responsible uh, for the site and you see uh, it was Gendarmerie Montana, but nobody is there because uh, uh, she is already uh, retired and the uh, administration has no more money to employ uh, anybody else. And actually it's nobody responsible for the site. So if you find a way, uh, you could go through this pillow and to, to, to go through the forest to find the site. And on the site you will see some, some information and uh, some, something like this. This is the structure of the fortress. If you could interpret the, the, the information would be okay. If not, you have to find the remains and to try to. Uh, the situation also is it's not so good uh, because the erosion of the construction, of the, the, the stone construction, but also of the clay, you see it's... Now it's uh, under discussion and preparing a new project by the Institute of Heritage to protect them and to change the, the issue. So uh, Piatra Roshie, it's another, the third uh, fortress. Also, you have to find the way to the left or to the right, when you arrived in front of this. So we guessed that it's to the left. And we succeed because it's to the left. It's, it's on the top of the hill. Uh, uh, so, not so far we did discuss, uh, discovered another. Uh, mentioned that it's, uh, and then, if you uh, are lucky, uh, the gate uh, could be open or it could be closed because it's a relation between private ownership and the state ownership. And this to go to the forest, you have to cross the private sector. And it depends. Um, so the quality of information also, it's not uh, so good. It's very old and not so much explaining. Um, and also you could see the remainder of the ancient road, which is very well done. It was, and it's a good uh, aspect of the, the, the site, but unfortunately it's not protected. And the remains of excavation since uh, 1980, something like this, uh, you see, they were not been covered. And when you arrived on the site, this is the center of the fortress. And the question is where the fortress is. It was not so much. So it's, it's here, some hills, remains of the excavations. It's not the landscape uh, from antiquity. So uh, it's good that it's open area on the main uh, part of the fortress, but it's not so clear. So uh, Kapuna, Kapuna fortress, it's another one, also it's on the top of the hill. Uh, you, you could see the road, which is not so easy to find, and also you have to follow the borders and, and the uh, buffer zone, uh, more or less are very clear uh, done. How much they're respecting, it's another issue. So you, you could see a aerial photo, and then from the main road, two kilometers, you have to actually to find a way to try to find through the private properties. Um, it's 
Okay, auto access is, is closed, uh, but it's not so clear the way. Chetate, you see, it's, more, it's in this direction. Uh, but in this direction, it's another gate. And if it's open, it's okay. If no, you have to just to jump. And then to find the way. So in finally, you'll find that when I was there in, in June, it was, so you see some information, more actual than it was before. But when we visited the site two months later, it's very bad word, I not translated from Romania. It's a relation of the, of the citizens to the government, actual government, or actual party, but it's another issue. You know, from June to September, they, actually they destroyed the information uh, and saying something uh, against the, the government. Um, some think it was right, uh, some, some people from the uh, Bucharest tried to do some project, restoration project, uh, which is another aspect of the, of the quality of information, um, how they re-establish or how they con reconstruct. Uh, so they use the imagination, and that's why uh, we discussed, we have to use the experts. Who are experts is another issue, but we have to ask archaeologists, architects, we have to analyze and to build the project not like this, because it's not to go, the, the, the goal is not to rebuild or re, uh, re, uh, rehabilitate uh, of the fortress according to general knowledge from how it was in medieval time, how it was or how it is in some parts of the world. Uh, it should be adapted to the local realities and to be taken account the uh, results of the archaeological excavations. Blidaro, uh, it's another fortress which is much better uh, than others. Also, yeah, I will finish. Yeah. <laughs> You could see the access. Also, you have to jump, really, to this, uh, and to go in the fortress to see some 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 remains. Um, more or less, it's clean site because it's one guy is responsible and trying to to, to protect the site. Uh, but the uh, the last and I think the worst case, Benitza. Uh, from the road, you could see the inscription, the World Heritage Cetate Benitza is just in front of you. It's just in front of you. It's exactly on the top of this hill. And here it's the <laughs> railway. And then no more ways to find the fortress. You have to guess. Okay, my first, uh, uh, when I tried firstly, so I didn't uh, find, because you have to go through the uh, railway and you have to be careful because it's active one. And in front of you could come, or behind of you, and you have to jump to the left or to the right. So through the forest, you have to go and to try to find some remains. So in finally, I arrived on the top of the, the mountain, but my question was where the World Heritage is, site is, because nothing through the forest is visible, and uh, it is World Heritage site. It's not just some uh, remains of the constructions, I don't know, for various periods of time. So that's why I think, uh, access to the sites and also uh, preservation should be part of the sustainable development and should be discussed of the uh, people from the local to the national level to uh, find the best way for uh, giving the access, for explaining what it is. And also uh, it is a question about the real situation and the future development of the World Heritage Site in Romania. That's why through this project, we are trying to raise the questions, to try to open the eyes of the responsible people from the local area uh, to, the, from, to the national one and to accept the reality. And after that, to try to find the solutions for each case separately and also to the, develop the management plans. Uh, because the management plan, it's a real tool for preservation, for the tourist development and for sustainable development. Thank you yeah. so much. I hope I